Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome back to another episode of the Game Developer Toolbox. Today we're going to be looking at the seminal Tiled Map Editor. Uh, it's open source, completely free, and supported by just about every game engine you've ever seen. Uh, it allows you to create maps as you can expect from the name, uh, tile-based maps. Now, tiles don't necessarily have to be square, however. We can make orthogonal tiles, uh, but we can also make isometric and hexo uh, hexometric tiles as well. Um, I featured this pretty heavily on Game From Scratch. I actually, in fact, did a full five or six part tutorial series on using tiled, and I'll link it down below. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, I've got you covered. Now, keep in mind, this is not, um, in any way meant to be a tutorial. This is to give you an idea of that a tool exists and what it's capable of. But if you want to learn more, jump into those tutorials. It's about an hour total length, uh, whereas this is going to be in the five to 10 minute range, I prefer. So as I was mentioning earlier, it's completely open source. Um, you can download and it, get it on GitHub. Um, the code itself is C++ written using the Qt uh, libraries. It's very clean. Uh, you could easily extend it, but you shouldn't have to, in fact. Um, now. You can download Tiled in binary form for just about every single platform you care about at www.mapeditor.org. Uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and click a quick look at Tiled. And this is it. Now one thing that's misleading about the name Tiled is you don't have to use just Tiled. We can actually use full arbitrary images. Uh, we can define polygonal regions, etc. But for the many people, we will in fact be using Tiled-based maps. Now it's a layered-based system. You can create as many, many layers as you want uh, within reason. Uh, you can set properties for them that can then in turn be used in your game. Now as I mentioned earlier, Tiled game support, game engine support, is staggeringly good. Pretty much every single open source engine has a tiled importer. Most closed import, uh, closed engines such as Unity, uh, have a tiled importer of some form available. So this is a tool you can slot into your tool chain almost regardless to which engine you're using. Now, uh, as I mentioned at first, a tiled map can be uh, orthogonal, isometric, staggered isometric, or staggered hexagonal in size. Um, you just simply come in, you tell it how you want it to be encoded, so CSV file, uh, base64 encoded, or Zlib base64 compressed, basically. Um, you set your map size and your default tile size. Let's go ahead and create that. You can see over here, this is our um, map now drawn. We can uh, hold down the uh, control and use the scroll wheel to zoom out. So there you go, there is our map, our 32 by 32 tile map. Now we can create multiple layers within the map. So you see here, we can add a tile layer, object layer, or image layer. So as I said earlier, you don't need to use tiles. You can have a nice parallax background going on for um, say a scrolling sun, or sorry, a scrolling uh, cloudscape or whatever in the background. Um, you can compose your, your level if you want entirely out of images, but in this case we're going to focus on tiles. Now layers go, things will be drawn on top of each other. You can switch the layer ordering right here. Let's just work on a base layer for now. So here we go. Here's our map. Now we need to go ahead and create a tile set to bring in. And I'm going to use one of the defaults that ships with tiled itself. So I'm just going to go ahead. There's two options here for bringing in tiles. You can either bring in a collection of images or you can bring in tiles in a single image file. And that's what we're going to do is bring in one giant image full of tiles for us. Uh, so tile set image, go ahead and browse it. So if you go to the tiled examples folder, uh, we're going to go ahead and use this TMW desert spacing one. And one thing that's cool about this is it supports auto tile, which you'll see in a second in action. Now, key thing here is there's a one pixel margin and spacing between tiles. So it's important you set that, but otherwise our tile sheet is 32 by 32 and go ahead and create it. You can, now you can see over here, is basically your canvas that you're going to paint with. And we can come in here and do a quick stamp, oh sorry, that's a quick fill. So go in, grab the just generic desert tile, and there you go, you've just created a, a, you have a desert now. And we can come in here, we can turn the grid off or on if we wish, like so. Uh, we can have animation, so we can swap a tile over time. I don't have any animated tiles to show you this, but, um, so there's a, quite a bit of functionality in here. We'll put the grid back on. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and show you um, the auto tile functionality. Actually, no, let's just show normal functionality for now. So let's say we want to paste some cactuses in our world. We switch back to our stamp instead and just draw them in like so. Uh, and that's all that's involved in placing tiles. We can also, if we have a selection of tiles, we can just select it as a group here just by mousing over it with left mouse button and paint multiple all at once. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and define some terrain. That is uh, like-minded tiles and let it automatically do its magic for figuring out the transitions between them. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick example using this uh, stone right here. Uh, we'll call that one, I don't know, uh, brick. 
Uh, so we're just going to come down here and click this guy, define a new terrain, and it brings up this map like so. Now I'm going to add a new terrain type, and we'll call it brick. And just um, define the, the outskirts and then interns of this brick over here. So now we also want to tell it how to do the transition. So we're just going to grab the outside of this one, like so. And then finally, let's go and set the train image so we have an idea of what brick looks like. And that's it. That was all that was involved in defining a brick um, tile and seams. So now we could go ahead, we could do the same thing for stone, we could do it for cobblestone, uh, but we'll just go with the one for now. So we'll go ahead, now we have a brick train. We'll switch here to the trains and we can see our brick is now here. So now you'll see when we're painting our map, Nothing special so far, but watch this. So it's smart enough to know how to transition and bump up against other kinds of tiles. And if we define all the other tiles, when they interact, they will automatically border as well. So let's see, here you got this nice edge coming. Now let's just fill this in. You'll see that edge is automatically pushed out and so on. And if I defined the stone tile over there, would know how to transition and deal with each other. And this auto tiling uh, ability, sorry, not auto tiling, but this terrain ability allows you to quickly and rapidly um, build out uh, very cohesive terrains using simple and fast brushes that, that programmatically look correct. Now, there's also auto tiling in here. It's a set of rules you can use to find and replace. Watch the tutorials if you want more detail there. I'm not going to try and get into uh, the specifics in this. It's not the purpose of these videos. Uh, but as you can see, the terrain system allows you to paint out maps very fast. And then, as I was saying earlier, we can add layers on top. So this layer, uh, tiled layer two, will now be on top of our first layer. So let's go back to our tile set. And now let's place a sign. You can see on the underlying brick. Now, of course, this tile assumes the background was uh, desert, so it's gonna look a little strange if the uh, underlying layer wasn't in turn desert. But there's nothing to say that these tiles couldn't be uh, and normal uh, transparent images that would then go on top of any other layer you were dealing with. So let's go back again to our top layer, and there you'll see the layer draws on top of the layer below it. Now, you can go ahead and you can change the order that they're drawn in easy enough. Um, so that is the layering system. The layering system is quite powerful. We can have an image layer, we can have um, an object layer, we can have various different layers be in here. Now let's go ahead and show you one thing. Here's an object layer. Uh, we can also have um, polygonal definitions in here. So I could go ahead and add uh, shapes. So if we had uh, a code based trigger, so this doesn't necessarily have to be uh, rendered in your map, but you could do things like add, um, this is your start point, your end point, um, a power up, etc. So you can easily add uh, programmatic or um, code, code focused uh, design features to your map. And on top of that, we can also add properties to each of our map. Um, so we can go in here, we can add a custom property, um, hit points, and we can give it a value of 42. So if you had uh, various properties that go along with uh, a tile or a map, you can embed them here and then in your code easily access them. So that way you can add design time uh, or you can put the, the functionality in the hands of your designer and then deal with it from code. So you can easily turn tile into your full-blown uh, level editor, use these properties to integrate back to what you're dealing with. And speaking of working to your uh, game engine, there are a couple editors up here as well to make you aware before I move on. So I'm almost done here. Uh, and again, if you want more details on tile, be sure to check the tutorials below. Um, there's a ton more functionality and I go into a ton more detail than what I do here. So be sure to check those out. Uh, but you see here, we've got an editor for, oops, I'm in the wrong spot there. Uh, we can bring in, we can do tiled animation. So basically you can set frames and then preview the animation over time. So for example, we could have this guy and then the next frame be this guy. So every, not a great animation, but obviously if you had animated water, etc., you can see how you can easily animate your tiles. Uh, this is your duration in milliseconds. So this will cause each animation frame to last half a second and then go to the next one. I can define multiple frames, obviously, switch between them. And then on top of that, and you see it's updating over here on your map. Now, in addition to the animation editor, there's also a collision editor, which you can use to define um, the boundaries of the 
the collision volume for that tile. So then when you bring in it to your code, uh, if you're integrating to say Box2D or another physics engine like that, you can already have the physics shapes defined for you. So you just have to hook it up to your code and you're good to go. So again, that's all I'm gonna cover today for Tile. Tiled open source, um, completely free, map editor that is supported in basically every single game engine you've ever seen. And I only really scratched the surface of what it's capable of. So go check the comments down below if you're interested in learning more. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. See y'all later. Bye.